Hey there everyone, welcome back to Dan Cave, welcome back to one of my monthly uh, bench updates. Uh, so this is going to cover July, wow we're into August already, I'm sure I said something similar last month but yeah again, you know, months are flying on by. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to have a look back at July, have a look at what's been built what's been finished what's been bought uh we'll then start having a little bit of a look at what's going to come up uh in terms of what I'm building at the moment talk about what's coming up in terms of video builds uh as you can probably hear oh, i've got a little bit of a head cold uh probably because i interacted with some other people last week uh so went on holiday with some family and seemed to have come back with an illness so lucky me uh so yeah so i've been suffering with that for most of the week so uh no sympathy required so so yeah so so we'll prattle on through the kind of usual stuff that we cover in the bench updates uh so as is usual you know if you've been here before you know thank you for coming back uh if you've not been here before hello and welcome please give a like give a subscribe uh drop me a comment if you want uh modeling related or otherwise uh, i'm quite happy to answer pretty much anything uh so what's kind of been happening since last month well uh so yeah so i've been on the live show uh the ism live show uh for the last few weeks as part of the uh the friday night crew so that that's been really interesting a uh, great bunch of guys uh, a few of them have their own channels uh, any of you out there that do watch obviously know there's been a few changes over the last kind of few weeks and months uh, a couple of people have left and of course a few a few new people have come in as well so you know as with everything uh i guess the show must go on uh so yeah so but but that's been that's been a kind of interesting fun time getting involved with that as well uh other things that have been happening uh i'm really busy with work which is not modeling uh actual work because I, I do have a full-time job as well uh so that's probably you know limited the amount of time i can spend modeling hence you know over the last month there's only really been the the gt 350h that's been kind of out there as a video build and even that was finished before the video came out uh, so that was actually finished in the last monthly update uh, and then over the last month the two parts of that have come out uh, there is another kit that's just spoke about quite a while ago which is a really old airfix uh, g91 kit so that is that's painted and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the work in progress bit uh, so i have been recording that and that will come out probably as kind of you know a relatively short single part video uh, kind of a vintage plastic uh, type thing I do have plans to, to work on uh, another kit and do that as a video build. Uh, well, we've got lots of ideas for video builds. I guess really the restriction for me is time. So, you know, I can, you know, I can relatively easy do the recording work. It tends to be the kind of editing and stuff that, that slows me down, really. Because uh, if I'm editing, I'm not building. And, I, you know, I'd rather build. So, you know, I'm trying to find a nice balance uh, between both. It is summertime, you know it's it tends to be a quieter period people tend to do more outdoor activities so yeah it's a, it's a bit of a balance so it, it, I, i've always found summertime tends to quieten down a little bit in terms of the amount of kind of builds so uh if you follow my facebook page uh the dan cave also uh i did post another kit that i finished which was the the bell kits manta i'm going to talk about that a little bit in a few minutes uh so that that's actually kit number 21 for me sorry uh 20 kit number 20 completed uh so kit number 21 is also completed although i haven't posted any pictures of it yet so we will cover that in when we get over to the bench in a minute uh that's another car kit uh so yeah in a way kind of aircraft kits not much completed uh cars over the last month I've dominated a little bit. I think I've enjoyed them. I've been liking them, but I have got a couple of aircraft kits on the go, and we'll cover that in the work and progress bit. 
So that's probably enough of you guys having to look at this mug. Uh, we'll now switch over to the, the bench cam and we'll have a little bit of a look at what's been completed. Uh, probably come back to me a little bit later anyway to do a little bit of a summary at the end. So uh, thanks for watching so far uh, and we'll, we'll go over to me. So uh, as I just mentioned, I'm going to cover the what's been completed first. Uh, so the, com the kit that I showed kind of very in a censored way last month that was finished and, and now the video bill is out there was, was this which is the the Ravel uh, GT350H uh, the Hertz uh, Shelby Mustang not you know it's not a brilliant kit it's not the best kit from Ravel they do have some better kits uh, but you know a little bit of work it's come out pretty okay. Uh, really kind of pleased with the the kind of black finish. The decals went down very well. Uh, for me, you know, this is probably uh, yeah, probably my favourite shape of the of the the Mustang. Uh, I like the kind of the flatter kind of front on the nose. Uh, I think the later ones kind of kind of sloped a little bit more forward. The headlight set back a little bit more. I actually quite like the flat front on this. Uh, I like the kind of straight line, you know, with only a little kind of raise at the shoulder level, and you know, the kind of tub kind of sits squarely on top of it. So, uh, so yeah, so this was primed, you know, bodywork some UMP grey as primer, uh, then used Ravel silk black as the base colour. Uh, decals went down on that straight away, absolutely no problem. Uh, and then Pro Range 2K, uh, and as you can see, the bonnet does open, and there is a little bit of a motor in there. Not, you know, no kind of great amount of detail. There is some kind of ignition wires added, uh, relatively poorly. I suppose the kind of main addition is I put some wire just to cover the, I suppose the lanyards for the the clips for the bonnet pins. Major kind of problems I had was was the screen. Uh, the original kit screen got broken, so I ended up having to manufacture one from acetate as a replacement, which actually probably turned out better than the original kit one. It's probably a clearer view through it. Uh, interior is just basically black. Uh, kind of makes a nice palette for a little bit of the silver touches to stand out. Uh, and we've got the kind of steering wheel done and the, the wood effect. So that came out pretty nice, pretty happy with that. Uh, so that was that was number one, which was actually completed the month before, but we didn't really talk about it last month. So in terms of what was actually done in the last month, uh, one that was very recently finished was this, which is the Bell Kits 24 scale Opel Manta 400. Uh, so this is not the kit decal scheme. Uh, this is a decal scheme from Reggie Models uh, for an Irish rally driver called Austin McHale. Uh, so the, the, this car I would have seen back in the 80s uh, on the, the Irish rally stages. Uh, I would have been quite young at the time but uh, my dad actually drove an ambulance for the Red Cross and they did a lot of marshalling uh, for the Circuit of Ireland rally. So uh, I did tend to kind of follow them around and uh, we did get to a few stages. I used to go to a service station in my hometown so I would have seen these cars. Uh, Kind of all these kind of early uh, Group B cars that were uh, raced on the the Irish Rally stages. So really wanted to do one of these schemes. Uh, so yeah. So again, this was primed in UMP grey. Used the same Ravel silk black that I used on the Mustang. So that came out pretty good. Reggie model decals went down fantastically. They are very thin, but they're very strong. They do. They really do stick. Uh, once they're in place, they're kind of hard to move and have a tendency to stretch a little bit. So it's quite important to get them in place uh, pretty much straight off. I mean, you can float them a little bit with a little bit of water, but you know they're so thin they will kind of sit to the surface and stick really, really well. Which is both a positive and a drawback if you get them in slightly the wrong place. But most of them seem to have come out quite well on this kit. Uh, 
so I mean the bell kits kit they are pricey you know don't kid yourself they're not the quality of most Tamiya kits they are pretty good quality there is some nice extra so there is a little bit of photo etch uh, you get the aerial some of the, the pins the clips for the screens uh, the inserts for the mesh etc uh, brake discs few things like that you get harnesses and seat buckles and stuff like that so all in photo etch so that's a nice touch you get the window masks as well which is nice uh, and for me that the kit went together quite well I know people have struggled to get the body to sit on the chassis uh, so for me kind of knowing that I did trim some of the chassis away to make sure that it would fit better and you know come the final assembly that went together pretty well uh, for me so so yeah so really really happy with that the, the wheels are not they're not the exact wheels that will be run on this particular car most of the pictures I've seen show it running the, the five spoke GM wheels uh, but the bell kits kit comes with only a kind of match set of these steel wheels uh, or a pair of the five spoke or a pair of the I think they were a BBS alloy wheel uh, so I just kind of went with the four steels uh, apparently renaissance models do some so I may go look for them at some point but yeah so really pleased with how this came out uh, and another Group B rally car in the collection so then the final completion uh, was this which is the Tamiya 24 scale Ferrari 360 Modena. Uh, so this kit was originally uh, an eBay second hand kit, partially started. Initially I just thought it was started, there wasn't much done to it, but when it arrived uh, at some point the roof had actually been squashed a little bit. So uh, there was a little bit of work to try and get that roof kind of manipulated back into shape. Uh, as it turned out there was also a piece missing so what's actually here in the diffuser uh, so we just see it there so that is actually a scratch built part that I made to replace what was uh, missing from the kit uh, aside from that it went together pretty well uh, so the body works primed with UMP pink primer with a little bit of white just to lighten it uh, then the base colour is Gravity Spain Rosso Corsa, I think it is. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, Ferrari Rosso Corsa. Uh, so that one, that one from Gravity Spain. Beautiful colour, went down brilliantly. Uh, the interior view, zero paint, saddle tan, uh, primarily, which uh, you should be able to see some of the interior. Yeah, and then uh, details picked out with uh, Tamiya Ravel acrylics, etc. Uh, the only major problem I had with this, uh, again if you follow uh, the ISM page or uh, if you watch the live show you'll see it this coming Friday. Uh, the side windows that I originally had in so the original kit parts, I was trying to use them to help shape the roof back properly from where it had been crushed. Uh, so when I kind of pinned and glued it, obviously at some point that was too much stress and I ended up with some cracks in the glass. So the only way to fix that was basically to cut off the opening bit to kind of show them as open windows. And then the quarter lights were then coated with Tamiya smoke basically to hide any remaining scratches. Which seems to have come out quite well actually. It uh, doesn't really take away from it and it is possible you have tinted windows. So there we go. Uh, yeah really pleased with that. Uh, I've not built a Ferrari recently so it's kind of a nice addition to the kit. Uh, the Ferrari metal badge that's supposed to go here that was actually missing from the kit as well so, uh, so that was a little bit disappointing but not a huge problem boot lid opens uh, and you can see that uh, Ferrari V8 is in there or at least a 24 scale representation so uh, not much of the engine that you can actually really see you can't see very much from the underside either so uh, but overall, you know, happy enough with that. Left the original chrome, uh, kit chrome wheels in. I thought they looked good enough. Uh, so yeah, so quite pleased with that. So that is kit number three that was completed. So next up is the what's been bought section. Uh, so 
the last month, a uh, little bit of eBay searching, uh, managed to pick up a few out of production kits, uh, which I've been looking for for a while. Uh, so first up, I managed to get this one, which is the Domino uh, Escort Cosworth rally car. Uh, so Domino at some point obviously managed to get Tamiya to, or got hold of Tamiya's moulds and re-ran uh, the Tamiya uh, RS Cosworth. So, uh, so this was reboxed a few years ago by Domino, uh, no longer in production. Uh, the Tamiya boxings are incredibly pricey, but I managed to find this one at, I won't say a cheap price, but certainly a price that I thought was reasonable, so I went for it. Uh, so this comes with uh, Shunko decals, uh, which is basically a reproduction of the scheme that I think was in one of the Tamiya boxings anyway. So, so yeah, so really pleased to get this. It, it, it is quite a simple kit, there's not a huge amount of parts, uh, but it's a lovely uh, World Rally car. So the Ford Escort RS Cosworth. Uh, so that was, when I got this, this was actually completely sealed in its original boxing and had the original price sticker on it as well uh, from whoever bought it. So uh, they managed to shift it on at probably a little bit of profit. Uh, but, you know, I was happy to pay the price because it's a kit I wanted and now I've got it in the stash. So that'll be built. Uh, you may see a trend that there does seem to be a lot of rally cars. Uh, I have to admit, I am a bit of a rally car fan. So yes, that was a good one for me. So then another out of production Tamiya kit uh, that I managed to find was the Honda NSR 500 uh, in the Nastro Azuro Valentino Rossi scheme. Uh, so really, really pleased to get this. Uh, another out of production one. I have built McDewan Repsol NSR uh, earlier this year, so I know kind of how this kit goes together. I think it's pretty much the same kit. Uh, yeah, certainly seems to be most of the same parts. Uh, probably a few little differences here and there. Again, it's not a particularly detailed kit. But, yeah, I have to admit, I was quite pleased to get this. So that's another bike to build at some point in the future. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of aftermarket extras available if I wanted them. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not a... I tend not to go for them. Unless they're kind of there and handy, or it's, you know... In some cases, if there was a lot of carbon fibre, some of the aftermarket kits come with, you know... A decent amount of carbon fibre... So yeah, so I think yeah, I think most of this is pretty much the same. Uh, certainly looks complete in the box. Again, this was it was open, but all the all the bags are still sealed. So so yeah, so happy with that, and the decals look in very good condition, which is which is a nice bonus. So so yeah, so happy with that. That's another Tamiya motorbike for the collection. And then another out of production Tamiya kit. Oh, the Sierra RS500. Uh, so another another fast forward, another Sierra, another Cosworth. Uh, so this one's been out of production for a while. They can go for ridiculous prices, particularly if the Texaco boxing. This boxing goes for less. Uh, it's the same kit, just different decals. And to be honest, with kits this old, chances are uh, the decals are going to be shot anyway. So you're probably always looking for aftermarket. So once again, it's it's a very simple Tamiya kit, curbside. Uh, I did look at the decals in this, and yeah, they are pretty much shot. Uh, so I have ordered some aftermarket decals for it. Uh, so it all looks good, all looks complete, no damage. Uh, it's very pleased to pick this one up. Uh, I think I've ordered some, I think it's British Touring Car decals for it. Uh, 
is it the Labat scheme I think I've ended up ordering so uh, so I was kind of trying to decide between this and maybe doing one of the rally conversions because some of the decal sets do come with resin parts for it as a trans kit but yeah I think I'll go with the uh, the touring car version in this case so that that's pretty much it for the buying side uh, not huge amount in terms of numbers but certainly in terms of things I wanted, things that would be on my wish list, yeah I've got a couple of kits that were definitely on the wish list. So next up is the in progress section uh, so first up we'll have a look at this uh, so this is the the very old Airfix uh, Fiat G91 kit uh, so as you can see it's at the kind of base colour stage. Uh, so it's been put together pretty much out of the box. Uh, I have rescribed some of the panel lines uh, just to kind of bring a little bit more of a modernish feel to the kit. Uh, so it was primed in UMP grey. Then base coat is Vallejo Model Air uh, FS34079 uh, Forest Green. So that was the call out for the particular aircraft that I'm going to do because uh, the, the kit decals are pretty much shot. Uh, so they're done. So I'm going to do this all green aircraft, uh, which is Portuguese Air Force, from their campaign in Mozambique in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, so this is an extra decal sheet that I've got, uh, so that'll get used for this. So this is pretty much at ready for decals. Uh, there's a little bit of paintwork to touch up just where it's been knocked about doing the base coat. Uh, so we'll get to that. So it's a base coat, although this was used as the primary kind of colour, uh, what I did was I mixed it with some white just to give it a lighter shade. Uh, then darkened it up a touch to add some post shading to give a little bit of kind of variation on the colours. So that'll give a kind of template for the for the decals to go down onto, uh, and then we'll do the kind of usual probably aqua gloss it, uh, give it some weathering, beat it up a little bit, uh, and then probably dull it back down with a with a matte coat, uh, and then do the final assembly. Uh, so as you can see the landing gear doors are done, fuel tanks are done. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty well advanced at this stage. So this has been recorded and as I kind of said in the intro, the plan is it'll be a kind of a single part 20-25 minute video. Because it's not a huge amount in the kit, so uh, it'll be a little bit of a vintage plastic video build. But yeah, so kind of lost my way a little bit with this wasn't really interested but getting it painted actually has kind of reignited the the desire to get it done and completed so that should be completed in the next week or two with the video probably coming out not too long afterwards so so what else is in progress well on a slight bit of a whim uh just grabbed a kit off the shelf so this is one that I bought earlier in the year so this is the Ravel uh, Audi R8 in 24th scale. So that's, yeah, as you can see, we're pretty much just at the very kind of start of kind of parts cleanup. Uh, so the bodywork has been uh, basically de-seamed. That's about all that's been done so far. Rear bumper's been put on. There's a little bit of work to blend that in. Uh, let's have a look. So you can see kind of in around about there uh, there is a little bit of a step along there so that's going to be the next little job to do on that to get the body prepped before I can go to prime uh, so basically none of the other parts have been removed from the sprues yet but that will be in progress in the next couple of weeks uh, also on a little bit of a whim and kind of unplanned I also started on this which is the uh, Italieri 72nd scale F111A Aardvark uh, So yeah, so that's, as you can see, that's actually had quite a lot of 
kind of the major build work done. Uh, cockpit has been kind of painted up and decaled. Not a huge amount of detail put into it. Uh, might kind of add a little bit more to it, but we'll see uh, once I test fit the glass and see how visible it is. So uh, it's got the moving wings. They'll probably end up being fixed in place because there is underwing uh, hard points, which there'll be some stuff mounted to. So we'll we'll see how that kind of comes along and decide what I'm going to do with that. However, at this stage, you know most of the kind of major construction parts are done and put together. The major next steps are going to be fixing the the seam lines, uh, getting some uh, filler work done because uh, there is a little bit of filler required. Not as much as kind of some metallieri kits, but a little bit more. I think the major stumbling blocks have been just in this area here between the the engine exhausts so where this tail cone fits uh, didn't quite sit right uh, it was sat uh, far too low an angle so I basically put in a little bit of a plastic hard plug uh, or shim whatever you want to call it so that just needs to be uh, basically sanded back a little bit just to get that profile of this part correct uh, so I think it needs to come forward a little bit like that, so a little bit more sanding on that and that will allow basically the, the bottom of the fin to sit properly flush with the top of this part. Uh, this will also need a little bit of blending in here as well, but that's relatively easy. Uh, so I think that's the major kind of surgery work to be done on this. The rest of it is just going to be normal kind of seam fixing, bit of filling of some gaps in and around where the, the forward fuselage joins the main fuselage. Uh, engine intakes, they'll kind of need a little bit of paint to do the insides etc. They'll probably end up having a seam line to be fixed as well with a little bit of filler, kind of standard for most kits of this kind of age. Uh, so this is a kit, I, th I think I bought this back in the 90s, the 1990s. Uh, so that's actually been in the stash for a while. Uh, cockpit decals actually went down quite well. So that is the original kit uh, decal sheet. Looks in reasonably good condition. So that will be kind of used for the, the colour scheme. So it'll be in the kind of typical uh, US, Southeast Asia, Vietnam era camouflage scheme. Uh, not yet picked which specific aircraft I'm going to do. Uh, but yeah, so I'm kind of progressing on that quite nicely so that's what have we got one two three kits in progress so that's that will keep me busy uh, so that leads me nicely on to what kit number four in progress will be uh, and I think it's going to be the next video build as well so this is the uh, Suzuki uh, Tamiya 12 scale Suzuki RGV Gamma uh, which is a motorbike, so I've not done a motorbike build on the channel yet uh, so this will be a first, so this could take a little bit of time probably a multiple parts who knows, we'll see how it progresses but yeah, so I'm quite looking forward to building this I'm not sure about video building it but I'm looking forward to that because I've not done that before uh, so I've not really thought about how the format of that is going to work It'll be one of those, I'll kind of play it by ear, see how I get on, so... Uh, it's it's tempting to kind of go, well, let's just dive into it and just, you know, do some work on it, bring out the parts bit by bit. If it works out at 10, 15 parts, so be it. The other side of me kind of thinks, well, actually, get some of the work done, get it progressed, and then see what video footage and see what's a natural way to kind of break it up. But it is very tempting to just start kind of building and start kind of putting out parts as it's done, uh, which maybe be a slightly different style from some of the stuff I've done already, which has been a little bit more pre-planned in terms of how I've kind of sequenced the segments of videos. So, But that is going to be coming up soon. So uh, that's it, so let's just go back to me for a bit of a, a sum up. Right, so uh, so that's been July 
and a little bit of planning for August. Uh, so this head cold is, is kind of kicking my ass at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to get myself filled up on paracetamol and lemsips. So there's there's a cup of lemsip uh, over there just waiting for me to finish. Uh, so it's kind of the middle of the week now. So next up will be the Friday live show. So I'll be back on that. Probably the Sunday show as well, uh, as, as I normally tend to kind of model. Tend to have Friday evenings, some of Saturday and Sunday. That tends to be the main kind of modeling time. So midweek is kind of less, less available. It's just through work and, you know, spending time with family, wife, etc. Uh, so, yeah, so we've kind of gone through everything, the, the main things I wanted to cover. So... Uh, I guess the, the I suppose the important thing is is kind of maybe to to ask anyone that's kind of watching, anyone that has subscribed, you know, certainly if there is any kind of feedback on what you think about the channel, what you think about the content, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to kind of message you know directly, you know, if you want to let me know. You know, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think there's something I should be doing more of, something I should be doing less of, whatever. I'm quite happy to hear the feedback. You know, I'm I'm over the kind of 200 subscriber mark. So, you know, there's a few people watching. So uh, it, it is, it would be interesting to hear your feedback. I'm not saying I'll do anything about it, but, you know, it, it would be nice to kind of hear what people think about it. Uh, I think the numbers are kind of growing relatively steadily. You know, I, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not a huge self promoter, so you know, I, I try not to kind of overly annoy people and pester people into subscribe. If you watch the videos, yeah, I'll drop it in a couple of times. You know, please leave a like and you know, please subscribe, etc. Uh, but I kind of want people to come to the channel naturally. You know, see the kind of certainly see the final kind of pictures of a model finished and I'll put links in for the video build and then it's up to people to choose if they want to watch it so uh, and I just want to let it kind of grow from there and, and that seems to be the way it's kind of worked so far I think you know th there's been a couple of points where you know there's been really good kind of boosts from you know certainly from Paul at ISM you know has mentioned the channel you know a number of times uh, in his kind of bench updates and you know on the shows as well you know it's a good opportunity to give a little bit of a shout out uh you know a big thank you to luke carr as well as well at black rifle model works he's kind of dropped uh name dropped my channel a couple of times and posted a link for me as well a couple of times uh, i think i've prattled on for long enough and it's probably dragging this video out longer than everybody wants to listen to my slightly hoarse voice uh or look at this this mug so I'm going to end it pretty much on that note. Obviously, I'll drop in the last. Please leave a like. Please subscribe if you've not done so. Uh, however, if you've stayed here this long, thank you for watching. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and hope to see you again soon on one of the upcoming video builds. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.